Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Blocks team. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the overhauled grid block that's now available in Generate Blocks 2.0. The grid block is a versatile way to create common grid layouts like a 50-50 grid or some other interesting layouts like that, but the old version had some limitations which we've now addressed and completely opened up what you can do with the new grid block. So here on this page, let's go ahead and just drop this in. We can either type slash grid and just pop in this one here, or of course you can go to the block inserter and grab it from right here as well. Now, as soon as we drop the grid element in here, you can see in our settings tab, which is of course new in Generate Blocks 2.0, some of the default things that you would expect, like to be able to change the normal layout controls here exist. You can change the tag name, give it a shape, background image for the entire grid element, and so on. Let me go ahead and add some content inside of one of our grids here. So we'll just pop in a headline element and we'll just type in demo headline, pop in some sample text, and then let's do a Generate Blocks button. Just says something like learn more. Let's jump back up to the parent grid element here. And of course the default layout is this 50-50. So I'm gonna quickly switch this to one column and then let's go to the three column layout here. And as you can see, what happens is we get the two extra containers added along with all of the existing styling, along with the styling and the content that exists inside of that first container. Now what's cool about this is we will add that extra content for you, but we're not gonna delete it if you step back down to like a one layout, for example. But if we went to a three and then maybe you decided you wanted a four, it's gonna add that in there for you. Now, what's really cool about this is, let's say for example, I only have one container and let's say I have a class on here, like a global style for padding one. In this case, it just adds a little bit of padding and a border. And the same thing is gonna happen here. All of that stuff, including our global styles is gonna be duplicated. If we go three columns, then we can see we have our styling, including the global style all together whenever we change the layout, which is super handy. Now, of course, I mentioned that this grid block now has all of the familiar styles that you would expect from the global style system available directly on the grid. So if I switch over here to the styles tab, you can see that because we picked from one of the default grid layouts, our display is set to grid. And then what we chose here was a grid template columns of repeat three, min max zero, one FR. So a little complicated, but you can also just type in your own stuff. If you wanted to do one FR, two FR, for example, you can type in anything you want there. Now let's just say we wanted a simple 50-50 grid, so one FR on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this so we have a fourth container here. And then let's suppose you wanted to make kind of a magazine style layout where one of your containers stretches multiple rows. Let's go ahead and add a third row here. And just like you'd expect with CSS grid, what we could do is come to, for example, this second container. In the grid column, we could say span two. And then our container here is gonna actually span two columns since of course this is a three wide grid. Then what we could do is on the third container, we can do the same thing, span two, and that makes one of those kind of alternating magazine sort of newspaper style layouts. Of course, in this case, there's no gap between the individual containers, so we could go back up to the grid. We can look for our column gap here, type in one rim, and then our row gap, one rim as well, and kind of space those out a little bit. Now this grid block is CSS under the hood and it's also the same thing as if we styled a regular old container with this display grid and all the other options we've just looked at. So this grid is really gonna be helpful for you to just create something quickly and really easily and not have to manually set all the different grid controls if you don't want to. So of course the grid block is a whole lot more flexible now and we're really excited to get that in your hands. The next thing I wanted to show you just quickly is the query block as well. Of course, this used to be called query loop. Now in Generate Blocks 2.0, it's just called query. So when I drop this in and I pick one of these standard layouts to start off with, let's just choose the two column one here. When I open up my query loop here in the document overview, you'll notice that there is no grid inside of this. Instead, we have a looper item here, and this is essentially the outer wrapper, which is used now in place of the old grid block, which was of course not very flexible, and now we've significantly improved that. Across various different generate blocks elements, such as the looper, grid, container, accordion, tabs, all those kinds of things, use the same set of styling controls and under the hood, they are very, very similar, which gives us the ability to then have this looper element, for instance, have all the existing styling controls that you'd expect, whether you're working with the container or the new grid block, for example. Everything that we just looked at in the grid is also available inside the query here on the looper. In addition to that, we can also, of course, add a global style directly to this, which is gonna give you the most control possible. So this has been a quick overview of the enhanced grid block along with the changes inside the query loop in terms of its grid block. We hope you're excited with this and we're really glad to get this in your hands. Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll look forward to seeing you in a future video. Thank you so much for watching.